up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Yeah, another wide angle day as you can a see. Wide angle day. Um, what we're up to today, I've been busy doing all sorts of stuff during the week and I have to start with an apology. I am really, really, really sorry. There wasn't a video last week, but to be fair, I couldn't find my ass with both hands. <laughs> I've been busy as a busy thing. Um, so there wasn't a video last week. I've, you know, we had all these plans of getting on with the exhaust and everything else, and then all of a sudden I was told I'm decorating the hallway and the stairs. <laughs> so between that and two jobs and various other bits and pieces, I just haven't had time. So I am sorry for that. However, we are back on it today. And what we want to try and do is to get the headers sorted all the way down to the collector, which is maiden over there. You got it? So that's all done. I've done the inserts and stuff because obviously these tubes need to be sleeved onto it and blah, blah, mm. blah. But we basically want to come out the engine, have it all look nice and then squirrel away into that. So that's what we're doing today. And hopefully, no, that's packed, what up, we're that's, packed up nope, all the way to the collector. That is what we're doing today. <laughs> we have said this before. It might not be fully welded. It's not going no, to be No, it's not going to be welded. fully welded. But I want it all together and tacked up and looking like it's going to look, just not welded. So that's what we're doing. A few hurdles. <laughs> uh, a few. I ordered 90 degree mandrel bends. That one's not a 90 degree. Neither's that one. Neither's that one or that one. In and fact, also, none of, them. none of them are the same. <laughs> Basically, they range from about 94 to 97 degrees, which is ridiculous. So, we have had an awful lot of cocking about. We stuck all the collars on them to start off with thinking they're 90, that'll be fine. Stuck them on here, and you can see this light doesn't follow the frame, so it just looks stupid. So we had to figure out a jig for the bandsaw, figure out what angle we needed to cut it by taking um, essentially a reference off the bottom of the frame with the digital protractor, set that to zero, and then taking this angle here, that tells us where we need to cut the bend in the jig such that we can get this to follow straight down. And if you stick a slightly longer bit on here, ooh, there we go, you see it is gonna follow the, 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 the same angle as the frame tube. So that bit's all sorted. Um, there is a case of sticking that in the engine so we can start lining things up. Um, Steve Obert did manage to strip out one of the threads, so that's only held in with one and that's another repair job. Thank you. <laughs> One of the other threads that holds another of the flanges on is actually an M6, not an M8. So that's another repair I've got to do when the engine comes out. <laughs> but we're well, basically there. We, we know where the collector's going to go. 
because we've got a sump down here that we need to clear. Um, it's going to go something like that. So all I need to do now is to figure out where I need to chop this bend off. So it's a straight run from there to there. And then we can trim this back and blah, 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 and it's all good. So all I'm going to do is uh, take another reference off here, another reference off there. That will tell me where to cut that one. <laughs> And then a case of shortening this up to get it all in line and measuring the gap in there, we can stick another bit of tube in there and the first one's done. But how long was this took? Bloody well, ages, isn't it? All day by the time bloody ages. Figured it out and by the time we cut it, it takes ages to bloody cut these stainless steel. The good tubes. news is we haven't actually binned any of these off yet. Yes. We haven't cocked it up. It's just been dealing with stuff it's, that should be 90 degrees and is not 90 degrees. <laughs> it's frustrating though, isn't it? Because well, we started yeah. this morning making, making really good progress. And then... We'll get it done. We'll get it done. All of a sudden it's just sort of... Off. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. I'm gonna yeah, need, stuck in that again. I'm gonna need to get that out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Your hands? No. <laughs> no one in there. Oh, we caught that on, Phil. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got the um, the non rule. The what? Ruler. Long ruler. Yeah, I just want to mark a centre point for this. Um, how am I going to do this? Well, those two nuts coming down here are pretty good. Um, if I do, can you get me the little square as well? This one? So, so there's centre point. Near as damn it. Just want to eyeball that and check it.
Right then, after lots and lots and lots of mucking about, <laughs> made a couple of header pipes. These are the ones that are gonna go down the middle. Uh, I got some coals, I've still got a bit of dressing up to do and I've just noticed a little nick in there which I need to bob a bit of weld on. And they clean up all right, they fit an absolute treat. They're both the same, um, fit nicely into the head, line up, but one is about a mil longer than the other. I ain't particularly bothered. <laughs> I could take that up in the clamps. But they started to clean up really, really nice. All I've done is like hand with a bit of scotch bite like that, put like a brush finish on and they're coming up really good. All the curves are there. And it looks really good. And I'm not using it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I'll tell you why, actually. I will give you the skinny on why I don't like it. And it's down to these bloody things that were these. Mandrel bends. See, I ordered these, well, I ordered 45s and 90s. That's not what I got. They're not 45, they're not 90. So I had to make a jig to cut them at the right place on here so I could get everything to line up and all that malarkey. So there was a load of mucking about with that. But I can cut them straight and level and I can get, a, you know, exactly where I want so the angle comes out and that's all good. It's all peachy. The only trouble is if you cut these on the bend and then look on the end of it it's not round anymore it just didn't the i think where it's been drawn and it's you know it's gone around the die and all the rest of it you can measure it and it is near as damn it cock on um and that's in any direction very 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 slight differences but that's it as soon as you chop it on that bend it changes so it's, it's got to be sort of under some sort of stress or like that, I want to be round again. Um, and it changes. So then you've got the problem of trying to stick a round tube onto a not round tube. That gets interesting. Um, and it's, you know, there's an awful lot of dressing down and stuff and you end up whittling away some of the, the OD of the tube. So in some places it's skinnier, in some places it's a bit chunkier and it's just not the same, it's not right, it's not how it should be. And then the other thing is, I'll show you a picture of the weld, because this is in sections. Um, I'll cut it too short, so I had to stick another bit on the end. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's another join there, another join there, what well, about there, and then that's it. This is just a sleeve that goes in the end. Um, but obviously where you're taking it, uh, it was all done proper and that, it was all like cleaned up and then it was cleaned, you know, cleaned up with a Scotch Brite and a rag and stuff and then it was all cleaned down with acetone, inside and out. Um, I tacked it, um, you know, very, very lightly just in case I did need to shift it or anything. Then it was back purged. So you bung up one end, I just used a, uh, where is it? I'll just use this which is a piece of leather that's rolled up and you just shove that in the end and then the, um, the back purge tube goes in the other end. Whatever you're welding is the lower point because argon's heavier than air so it's all going to fill the bottom bit first. And then you TIG it. And I'll show you a picture of the weld so you can see the penetration in there which isn't too shabby. There's not masses of it or anything else. Um, but there is yeah, yeah, it's not oxidised or it's not crystalline or anything. It's nice and smooth, which is, you know, the whole reason that you back purge it and stuff. Um, but it's still a restriction. And I want it to be a nice, smooth inside to the tube so exhaust gases can get out. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's probably, you know, I, I know it's probably no biggie or anything else, but it's not right and I'm not happy with it. This project bike of Steve-O's, he started like six years ago or something. <coughs> About six years ago. And he had his best crack at it and he got it wrong and he wasn't happy with it or anything else. And that's why we're redoing it. And because he wasn't happy with it, it's got to be good. It's got to be built properly. It's got to look nice. It's got to function as it should do. And I don't want to compromise it. So I don't want to, I don't want to use them because I'm not happy with them. <laughs> He's, he's gonna poo himself when he sees this. I ain't told him yet and I ain't going to until he sees the video. I'm gonna see how long it takes. <laughs> so, 
was grubbing about for various other ideas. I went back through the comments and everybody was saying, oh, you should have put sand in that. <laughs> Even the fella in KFC, he went sand, should have put sand in your tube. So, I've been down to Wix and I've got some sand. <laughs> you all reckon that's the way to do it, so I'm going to give it a go. And then we'll see if you're right or not. <laughs> there was a fella, I had to go down to um, the welding supplies place and pick up a bottle of argon yesterday and there was a fella there who turned up in his van and he's got something or other marine services stainless steel fabrication and I thought he probably does too doesn't he <laughs> so I waited for him to come out and I just ambushed him and it was an ambush as well he was like oi you don't go anywhere <laughs> <laughs> he did look a little bit shocked I'll give him that told him what was going on and he's, he was saying that um, they only use 316, which is a marine grade stainless. That's what they put on all the spanky boats and all that sort of stuff. Um, just because, you know, salt water environment's about the harshest you're gonna get, so that's what they have to use. It's a, it's a higher grade, basically. Um, and he said, if you go, they only use 316, but if you go past 90, you're always gonna start running into issues. They always do. Um, and he said, are you using a manual bender? I went, yeah. He said, oh, that's what we use. And what size is the die and what size is the tube? So I told him that. What's the wall thickness? Told him that. He said, oh, you should be all right. Are you filling it? No. Filling it with what? Fresh air? Well, well you could try sticking sand in it. Just bung the ends up, don't matter how, knock a bit of wood in if you want, but just fill the whole thing up with sand and then give that a bash. That's how we do it. And we tend to be all right up to 90 degrees. I don't need to go past, what, I don't know, 70 degrees or something stupid? 67 and a half, I think it is. So, that's what we're gonna have a go at. I'm gonna set the tube bender back up. We'll get Isaac on the case, and that's it. We're gonna give it a go and see if you're right. Um, all I've done is uh, I've got some some alley bar which does actually fit in if you take the burrs off it it does fit in. <laughs> so all I did was put a little bit of a taper on it on Chuck Norris um, and just so it goes in easier oh yeah the lady's called Chuck Norris <laughs> I was trying to come up with names um, you know Chuck he's got a Chuck um, but also it's lethal. It just wants to rip your arm off and beat you to death with the wet end. So I thought Chuck Norris would have been a good one. I would have gone for Genghis Khan, but I can't spell that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we've got a taper on it. All I'm doing is putting some duct tape around it to sort of take up the gap. And then I'm mashing it in there. Just knocking it in with a hammer. I'll worry about getting it out later. Um, right, sand. How am I going to get that in there? Um... I ain't even got a funnel. All right, mug. Mm -hmm. 
All right, that'll work. That'll work a treat. So anyway, there was, um, there's loads of people that said, you know, shove sand in it and then have a go at bending it. And I think it was, I want to say Martin, Martin Megan. He punted me a link of this little Japanese fella um, who does, what's his channel? Uh, 46 Works. He's got like every tool under the planet. He don't say much, <laughs> but he's really good at doing all this. Um, the way he did it was again with sand. He just hammered a bit of wood in the end of it. Um, and then he heated it up with, he's got a, like a rosebud torch, you know, one of them big jobbies. And he bent it by hand. Um, just, you know, clamped it in a fixture in a vice and just gradually worked it around, got it cherry red, and off he went sort of thing, and it did come out nice. Um, loads of other links that I've seen, people uh, weld a plate over the end, I haven't got any stainless steel, not, not sheet, so I can't do that, so I'm doing it this way. But, it seemed to work. So we're gonna give it a bash and see if you lot are right, or if I'm just useless. How many mugs does it take? Oh no, we're nearly there. Nearly there. Come on. Oh, there we go. Right, three or four mugs worth. <laughs> How deep does that go? Yeah, that would be fine. Be interesting to see if this does work though, eh? I know it's going to be a lot harder to bend. Right, so this is how we did it. heavy. <laughs> right. Right then. Um, loads of people was going on about my little bender. This isn't the first time I've used it. I make loads of stuff in here. Admittedly it's smaller than this and it isn't made out of stainless steel. Um, and they was all going, oh you've got to grease it. No you don't. <laughs> Some benders you do, this one you don't. The only bit that is rubbing up against the tube is the follower here. Um, and it's only got like two, I don't know, inch and a half wide points of contact. And it's only the middle of that. You can see the witness marks on the inside of it. They're in contact with it. So now you don't need to grease it. Um, it's, oh, I don't know. Uh, it's not needed. Some, some of them you do, not this one. It's always done dry. So let's get him set up. All I want to do here is try and make a cheetah or a bend gauge. Oh, actually, should I mark it? I should probably mark it, shouldn't I? Right then. So, tube in the bender. And that little start marker I'm just going to use on the, the follower. So where the die and the follower join, that's where I'm going to put it. Um, so we'll have him. Oh, actually, do I want that one? Yeah, he'll be all right. Okay. So we can go around there. Have I got these the wrong way around? No. 
right, he goes through it. Right, you can go in there. You can go in there. You're in there. Take up the tension on it, and then we're going to wind that back. So our start mark is on the follower. about there and we want the marks on the top. That way when it bends it, all my marks will be in the centre of the bend. So about like that. That'll do. Zero the gauge. Then we can start cranking. This is probably going to take some shifting, I guess. I would think. Because it's hard stuff anyway. And it's pretty much filled with sand. The sand is there purely to try and help it keep its shape, so. That's not too bad. Eight degrees. Doesn't seem to be quite as much spring back either. And it's not really harder to move. Right, so 10 degrees, where's my Sharpie? Right, so we put a bigger line on the follower from where we lined up the first one. And then we keep going. degrees. Fifty. No, it's gone. It is gone. 
and I will show you. All right, so we got to 50 degrees. That is what's happened. So you can see here it's lifted out, which means the whole the tube has collapsed. So just filling it with sand doesn't bloody work. <laughs> well, my plugs haven't moved anywhere at the end of this. They're still exactly where they were. That doesn't work. <laughs> well, at least it dispelled the myth. Uh, right. So how am I going to do this? Because I really want to do it out of one piece of tube. And that ain't going to work. Look at that. And curiously enough, it is pretty much the same as doing it without any sand in it at all. My bungs is still all the way in. They ain't shifted. Where are they? There we go. Right, so these are the two bits of tube, which are mullered. <laughs> um, this is exactly the same tube as that. So three or four grade stainless steel, uh, inch and a half OD, 1.5 mil wall thickness, right? I did it cold, blah, 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 blah. You saw it earlier on in the other video. Um, and with no support in the inside, that's what happened, right? It just crinkled. Yeah, and both of them are basically the same. And both of them, it happened at the same angle, right? With this, that looks horribly familiar to me. If you look at that. Yeah. And if you have a look at the angle, it's basically the same. So filling it full of sand don't work. And I just wasted four quid on a bag of sand because you said it would work. <laughs> <laughs> Watching 46 works and stuff, the way that he did it, he just had two, two headers coming out and he, he bent a bit of, um, it was like six mil bar or something like that, just to get the shape that he wanted. And then using a big old rosebud torch, he heated the thing up after he's filled it with sand and shoved his bits of wood in the end. He heated it up pretty much to cherry red and very gradually shifted it very gradually shifted it. I ain't got a rosebud torch, not at all. The only thing that I've got is this. And I'm gonna need a bigger cylinder. <laughs> but I don't think I'll be able to shove it around the die anyway. Just cause I mean, that's a massive bit of like solid steel. It's just gonna sap all the heat out of it. Um, so I don't think that's gonna work. I could try doing it a bit slower, but I wasn't going hard at it. Not by, actually, let's try doing that. Right, the other thing I'm gonna try doing, cause again, you lot said, I'm gonna grease it up. <laughs> There's always time for lubrication. It's only a bit of tube. If I wreck it, I'll wreck it, don't I? Right, um, let's, Pum, 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 what's going to be the best way? Right, let's do this bit first. Because that way, I have tried basically everything that you said would work. So you can't accuse me of not doing it. Right, grease. This is just multi purpose grease. Nothing special, but it's grease. Right then, so some of the other stuff that you said would work was greasing it up, going slowly, um, bend a little bit and then backing it off. So we're gonna do all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So what I'll do is I'm going to do this in five degree increments, I think. Five degrees. Five degrees isn't much. That's like a little tweak. So, five degrees. All the pressure's off, and you can see as I do, yeah, the pressure comes off, all this lock can move again. So that's not under any stresses at all. So let's take it up to 10 degrees. Where was it we failed? 40, wasn't it? Right, so that's 10 degrees. Bungs ain't moving, sand is still in there, haven't took the sand out. Blah -dee blah -dee blah blah. So, 15. Fifteen. Still good. Twenty. The follower is scraping all the grease off, I can report. Because <laughs> you kind of, because this is on a ratchet system and you have to disengage it to move it to the next tooth, you know, you're kind of relieving that stress that you was all worried about anyway. There we go. It's not hooking up. Around here, somewhere, that it starts to fail. I think it started to flatten out again. But we will keep going. Yeah, there she goes. It's happened again. Right. <laughs> exactly the same. Now all my stuff is covered in grease. <laughs> <coughs> so you see my bungs is all still in. They haven't shifted at all. That looks very familiar. Because it looks the same as that one. And it's exactly the same angle. Basically this stuff does not like shifting at all. It's really hard, really hard. So the only thing that is missing out of this is heat. I could heat it up and try bending it that way. Do I want to do that? One of the comments was make it blue. Heat it up so it's blue and let it cool. And then do it like that. See, my bungs haven't moved at all. Not at all. And I'll get some pictures of this because the failure pattern is exactly the same. Exactly the same. Right. Um, well, let's heat it up then. <laughs> We've done everything else. Let's heat it up. basically running out of gas here. I did get it to blue, um, but then 
as you're moving the torch around, it kind of goes back to this sort of golden browny sort of colour. Not not quite the colour you'd be after when you would if you're looking at the temper sign. There's still blue hues to it, so that's about as close as I can get it. So now I'm going to let that cool down. All the sand is still in it, and then we can have a go at bending it again. <laughs> That didn't work either, did it? It's exactly the same. Exactly the same. Um, crinkle points is exactly the same. The angle at which it fails is exactly the same. So that don't work either. So what have we learned so far then? Well, sand costs four pound a bag. <laughs> I've ruined another piece of stainless tube. Um, you didn't have to grease the dies, but I thought, well, people said it, so I'll just show you, you don't. So there you go, you don't have to grease those dies on those benders. Um, filling it full of sand doesn't work. Doing it cold doesn't work. You know, I just haven't got the kit to bend stainless tube into headers, unfortunately, which means I'm back to mandrel bends, which I'm just not happy to use them. Basically, it's just going to compromise the bike. Um, I don't like the fact that I can't get in and dress those welds up. Because, yeah, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a weld there and there's a weld there. How am I going to get in to dress that up? I can't. Um, so, I think we need a plan B. I could just go out and buy a set of headers. <laughs> Didn't really want to do that, though. Um... Although they would be made correctly, just, you know, they, they wouldn't be as I'd want them on the bike, basically. And I don't want to compromise the bike, that's the thing. I mean, it's, you know, it's going to be his pride and joy. The other option that I've got, which I need to speak to Steve-O about, is when I was doing ASBO, he very kindly gave me the Delcovec system that came off this bike originally. Or well, at least the headers, the link pipe and everything else was just odds and sods that we, we scuppered together and I made it work sort of thing. So what we might end up doing is robbing Asbo, give him back his nice Delcovic headers. So at least we've got the headers there. The rest of the link pipe and can and everything else I can make. That's fine. They're, you know, I've already got bent bits of tube and we just have the bends off that that we need and you know, we can have at it sort of thing. But I'm thinking maybe the Delcovic system, stick it back on there because we know it fits. He had it on there before. And, you know, the, the tubes ain't going to be kinked or any of the rest of it. So I need to have a chat with Steve and see what he wants to do. And then at some point, I'll just get another set of headers for Asbo and stick him back on the road. So there you go. So far on this one, I'm admitting failure. <laughs> I can't do it with the kit I've got. I just cannot do it. I haven't got any other options, I don't think. I suppose I could try a ring spanner. <laughs> I'm not doing that, don't worry. Um, but yeah, so that's it. So I can't do it with the kit that I've got. It's the first thing I've not been able to do with the kit that I've got, but I can't do it. Um, I've gone through all the suggestions that was in the videos from all you folks, and none of them work. Not one. <laughs> but we did try at least, eh? Right, I need to give Steve-O a call decide what we're doing, and then just have at it and do what's what. So, we will see you in the next one. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for watching. I'm sorry this video has been so long coming out. It's just, like I said at the start, I haven't had a chance to do anything. It's just been manic. Um, and like, just dipping in for an hour here and an hour there. By the time we get set up and everything else, it's time to go home. So that's why you've had to wait. I do apologize. I will try and be better in the future. Um, but I really want to get on with this and, and see progress because it doesn't seem like it's been that much recently. But anyway, I hope you're all staying safe. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you again next time. Laters!